The metatarsals are long bones. Each metatarsal has a base, a shaft, and a head. In the articulated foot, the second metatarsal has the most distal projection, followed by the third, then the first, next is the fourth, and finally the fifth metatarsal has the most proximal projection. There is one important variation we should know. In this variation, the second metatarsal still has the most distal projection, but this time it is followed by the first, and then the third, and again the fourth and fifth metatarsals still have the most proximal projection. The shafts of all the metatarsals are concave plantarly, and the bases of the lesser metatarsals which are 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th articulate with each other via intermetatarsal joints. Each metatarsal has a convex articular surface that is more prevalent plantarly than dorsally, meaning there is more articular surface on the plantar side of the foot than on the dorsal side. This is why we can curl our toes inward more than we can extend them upwards. This is one of those concepts that you don't have to memorize. It makes sense if you just think about it. Because there's more articular surface here, we have more range of motion. On the plantar side, there is a medial and lateral extension of the articular surface. These extensions are called plantar condyles, and the lateral condyle is usually larger and projects further back proximally. During a lab practical, you may be asked to identify a metatarsal and you have to know if it's a right or a left. One of the easiest ways to differentiate is to look at the plantar condyles and find the lateral condyle. Once you know that it's larger, you put the metatarsal back in the anatomical position and if it's a right metatarsal, lateral would be on this side. And if it's a left metatarsal, the lateral condyle would be here. And in this case, the lateral condyle is pointing right, so we know this is a right metatarsal. On the superior surface of the head, proximal to the articular surface, is a depressed region called the anatomical neck. Proximal to the neck are two tubercles that serve as the attachment of the MTP collateral ligaments. Proximal to the tubercles is a surgical neck and the surgical neck is a landmark for performing osteotomies. Now, let's look at the differences between the metatarsals. In order to differentiate between the metatarsals, we first look at the base. We look at the shape of the articular surface. Is it kidney-shaped or triangular-shaped? And where is the position of the apex of the triangle? Next, we look for the presence or absence of articular facets on the medial and lateral surfaces. Next, we look at the heads of the metatarsals. The lesser metatarsals have a groove between the lateral and medial plantar condyles that allows passage for the tendons of flexor digitorum longus and flexor digitorum brevis. The plantar surface of the head of the first metatarsal has two grooved facets that allow attachment for the sesamoids. These two facets are separated by a ridge called the crista.